Hi, I'm Jacqueline Wiles. This is uh, craft and I'm talking time. Art. <laughs> I know. What it's like it? art and craft, like your craft, because yours is a craft. Uh, oh, okay. Art and crafts with Bo. Art and crafts with Bo. Or okay. arts and crafts. I'm not really like a stickler on it yet. Okay. It's... Okay. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Wiles, and this is Art and Crafts with Bo. So I'm back here at Canby High School. Um, spent four years here kind of on and off between being in the mountains skiing and coming to class to try and educate myself. Um, I was <laughs> gone a lot with uh, trying to pursue skiing and I knew from a young age that's what I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, it's fun to be back here in the classroom chatting it up with you know one of my favorite old teachers. Uh, so yeah, it's fun to be here. Yeah, so I've been skiing since I was two years old and racing since I was five. Um, I started on Mount Hood in Oregon and just wanted to go fast down the hill. I would chase my brother around the mountains and uh, we would just want to go straight. So our parents decided to put us on the race team. It was cheaper than lessons and, you know, they thought we'd get a good foundation of skiing. Um, and yeah, now I'm on the U.S. ski team uh, going to my second Olympics this February and yeah, just looking to go represent my country and hopefully bring home a medal. I can tell that you've done the interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> and that's not bad, like, th but there's like a, a clarity of your message of like, this is what I'm yeah. there to do. Well, it was funny at, when at, it was funny at home. Uh, so we had KGW and a couple others come over mm -hmm. recently. And uh, it was funny. I could tell my mom's never been interviewed because she's just like... Like, Mom, it's okay, just, like, relax. Like, she just, thinks she's natural, but you're, like, yeah, you can well, tell like, that she's, like, a deer. And yeah, like, she was pretty <laughs> nervous, too. I couldn't just tell. Like, mm -hmm. she doesn't, that's not her world. And, um, and I was like that, too, at first. But, yeah, you just, I mean, you just kind of, as the more you do it, you get better. But it's pretty funny. And then watching back the video, she's like, oh, why didn't you tell me? I was like, it was like a stick figure. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Like, I thought you did great. <laughs> like, I felt like it would draw attention to it. Like, yeah. Mom. <laughs> Slouch down a little. Slouch. <laughs> and, then, and then she's just like, <laughs> like okay, left slouch in between, in between stick and slouch. Uh, so alpine skiing. Yeah. What? I don't know what the correct term for this. Like different categories of winter sports. Mm -hmm. Like what? What are they? Could you list them? And like, had like, you ever considered any other one, or was it pretty? Were you sure, like at two or five, that this was it? Yeah, I think. Uh, Ever since I was younger, I knew alpine skiing, specifically downhill, is what I wanted to do. Um, when you go up to the mountain, you know, going on just normal skis, I just wanted to go fast. And I didn't really care about cross-country skiing because it just didn't look fun. Um, snowboarding, it, I feel like it wasn't that cool yet. And my family grew up skiing, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to try skiing out. Um, and then with joining the race program is how I learned about alpine skiing and realized that I wanted to kind of pursue that and would see as I got older you know my idols on the U.S. ski team and watch, watching them in the Olympics was really inspirational so I realized that at that point that's what I wanted to do. So how was your high school experience those high school years um, how were they shaped or affected by this dream that seemed to be so clear for you but maybe not so much for like your peers or your teachers or <laughs> anyone yeah. else? Yeah, I think it's tough when you're, you know, when, when you're in middle school, high school. I think even from when I was eight years old, I knew what I wanted to do. And I think also at, at that age, you know, friends and peers, they don't really understand or, like, know. They're like, oh, yeah, every kid dreams. But, like, yeah, one day you'll, you'll have to move on from that dream and, you know, come down to reality. And I think, you know, when I didn't let those thoughts of people – get in my head because I knew what I wanted to do and um, I knew if I had worked hard at it that I could accomplish it and um, growing up on, on Mount Hood I was always really fast and I think just from that age always doing well built a lot of confidence in myself so as I got older I just kind of kept pursuing that dream and it was tough at times because it would take me out of school but you know I tried to get work ahead that I could take on the road with me and um, a lot of my teachers were were helping out with being prepared and and I also had to do a little bit of online school, but I really made it work and knew what I wanted to do, so I was going to pursue that. Is there anything that you, and it's not a leading question, by the way, but with with this huge goal that you're obviously getting to like now realize, 
are there things that you feel like you had to give up or you missed out on um, that, that now looking back, maybe there's not regret, but you just kind of are like kind of seeing how much was sacrificed to get you here? Like, do you yeah. know what those things are? Yeah, I think for me, looking back on kind of my childhood and, um, you know, a typical teenage life, you know, you think about a lot of the school functions and missing out with, you know, time with your, your friends and getting to go to prom and all those sort of things. Um, back then it seemed like it was kind of a big deal, but, you know, as you get older, you look back and realize it's a small, awkward part of your time and it of, of your life, and it really there's so much more out there later on in life and so I don't I wouldn't change anything because I think it really made me who I am today um, I'm really grateful for those younger years being supported by my parents they did a lot to help me get to you know where I am now with thinking about how Mount Hood's an hour and a half away and how they would take me constantly up to the mountain back and forth for this crazy dream of mine um, so just looking back I think it's given me appreciation of know where I've come from and the people that have really helped me get to this point and I think all those experiences have made me who I am today so I wouldn't change any of it yeah so you mentioned your parents who are some of those other people that you just talked about that have kind of paved the way for this dream to be realized yeah Um, I had a lot of people along the way of course first off my family in general Um, you know besides my parents my brother was a really big influence I would honestly chase him all day every day would be on the mountain just trying to keep up with him so I think always having that nitty-gritty like just tagging along with the older kids him and and all my other race friends on the team Um, I've had a lot of coaches along the way also who've believed in me and um, there's just been a lot of steps along the way with with different people that have come into my life Um, but at the end of the day my family's been my sole supporting um, back that I have and can always rely on so it's nice to kind of have that love for them and share the passion of skiing with them so yeah so every year every year we have a world cup tour and that would be like the pga tour with stops all around the world and a finals at the end every two years we have a world championships and then every four years the olympics so a lot of people in the u.s think oh it's just olympics what we do but um, it's really a uh, all year round job um, when we're not skiing we're in the gym getting ready to be back on snow and when we're not in the race season we also travel to South America to train on snow so um, yeah I've been to Chile New Zealand for South America um, Argentina uh, I've been all around Europe Asia um, been to Spain Andorra um, within Europe also France, Italy, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, um, Slovenia, Slovakia, um, for Asia, I've been uh, Korea, Japan, um, I think I'm not missing a lot, I could be, I've been to Canada, I can't leave out Canada, um, so yeah, I've kind of been um, around everywhere and I've learned so much from those experiences with kind of getting an understanding of different people around the world and what they're accustomed to and their cultures and it's, I think it's given me a good perspective of just how people live and we get so caught up in our small bubbles where we're from so I think just having that experience of traveling has um, given me more than I think what I could have learned in a school. Yeah. Um, okay. I just said um again. Good thing I can edit mine out. <laughs> yeah, really. Woo! It's not live! <laughs> One of the biggest, uh, I guess, challenges that I've endured so far in my career and getting to this point was definitely uh, probably around when I was 15 or 16 and it, towards the end of my high school career the big decision to go to college or keep pursuing my dream because I had a couple people uh, that didn't believe in me and thought I couldn't get there and of course when you hear those doubts it makes you wonder okay should I believe them like yeah, is it really going to be this hard, or should I believe in myself? So a big lesson in learning, why would I listen to other people? I, I need to focus on, um, you know, listening to myself and believing in myself. And, you know, through all that, I, I kind of, I guess, downed the haters in my mind and decided, you know what, I can pursue this now if I don't want to regret it when I'm older. So I uh, took it upon myself to figure out 
why I was struggling and what I could do to make that next step. So I guess just learning, uh, you know, there's going to be people that doubt you in life, but that's okay. Like it's just use it as fire and, and know that, you know, if there's something you want to do, just work really hard, believe in yourself and I, anything's possible. So for ski racing, it's uh, a very confident sport. You have to, there's so many skiers that are at such a high level and there's such little things that separate them and having that confidence is is huge to be able to attack the hill and, and really ski well. Um, and I think I've really learned that over the years and even if you know you're coming off a bad training day or something, like you have to forget that and even if you're not confident, like kind of fake it, like fake that confidence because that'll really help you as well. Um, so I, I have a journal that I, after every day I go skiing, I write down how my day went and that way I know if you know, I had a day where I struggled or I did really well, I have that book that I can always go back on and kind of pick it apart and learn from. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's really helped me as well as just trying to always be in the moment. I do a lot of deep breathing, uh, try to meditate a little bit and that's really helped calm my nerves um, because the more calm and prepared I can be going into a race, the, the better I'm gonna do. So yeah. deep breathing has really helped me a lot and just helps with getting a lot of oxygen into the blood and helping my body be prepared. What is that, uh, the spot where you're setting up right before you go down the hill? Like, is, what's the name of that area? The spot you, of setting up? I, I like, like the start gate? Saying, that. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure I do I don't want to assume I'm like, you know, like I this. Like, no, I'm going to name, I'm going to start calling it that. Oh, oh the spot that we set up, the guys. The spot where you start up? Yeah, hello. I, <laughs> that's where I need to get to, the, start, the spot where we set up. <laughs> yeah, the start, what? No, the spot that we set Does up. Does anyone know how to get to the spot where we set up? <laughs> okay, wait, start gate. Yeah, start gate. Yeah, start start gate. Start house. Yeah, you call it either that. When you're standing there, sitting there prepping. Yeah. What is that, like, last minute, last minute thoughts that are going through your mind before you like plunge yourself downhill? Because anyone outside of this like craft, outside of the specialization, yeah. it's exhilarating to watch and frightening. Yeah. I mean, obviously. It's a rush, it might, or not obviously, I'm assuming it's a rush for you, mm -hmm. but for someone who does not have the training or skill set, it just looks like a surefire way to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, like what, what I doing? would be saying would be significantly different. It would involve a lot of explicatives. <laughs> and like, Sometimes that happens. And more, like, <laughs> hold me together. Yeah, um, I've so, definitely yelled a couple bad things. Yeah. Or, uh, what are your, like, get in trouble. last, yeah, like, That's thoughts before you launch? Yeah, so a lot of people in, that don't know ski racing don't, don't understand that there's a massive process that goes through in our day routine before we actually push out of the start. So for the speed events, especially for downhills, which is the event I do, um, we have a couple days leading up to the race that we get to go through like it was a race where we all get one chance to go down the hill and, and kind of feel the nuances of the track, all the little um, aspects, what we're going to encounter during our run, you know, feel the snow, um, see what the lighting's going to be like. So we get to get prepared a couple days leading up to the race. Um, and that's really big for our sport because when we're going 80 miles an hour down a sheet of ice pitch, we have to know where we're going at every little m moment and like things are coming up so quick for us. So we have to be able to adapt and, and learn to adapt quickly. Um, so we go through this inspection process and then we all every day we take one run on the hill um, So then when it's race day, we just do an inspection run to go check out the course talk to our coaches Figure everything out and then we go up in the start gate and once the race starts going uh, there, There's a TV monitor up at the start so we can watch the racers go before us and then before your run normally the the coaches the coaches in order go down and will radio to us and let us know how it's going and um, you know one of our teammates who, who's ever has gone first will be at the bottom radioing up like hey the track is sweet or watch out for this bump it's an ankle biter stuff like that so we have um, a good uh, preparation period before and um, I like to go through the course many many times in my head so it just becomes natural when I'm skiing I, I don't have to overthink it um, so that's helped me quite a bit trying to just have that mental focus and clarity and um, yeah it's the sport has definitely helped my memory, for sure. <laughs> if not alpine skiing, what would Jacqueline do? 
Oh. Or B. Yeah, that's hard. I've been asked that so many times. I honestly don't know what I would be doing if I wasn't skiing. Um, I have a lot of interests in health and nutrition. I think being an athlete, you really learn more about your body and what you put in it, how much it helps you. Um, so I think I have some interest in that, and I love to cook. With traveling the world and experiencing different cultures, I love getting a little taste of you know everywhere we go. Um, and then when I'm when I come home after being on the road, living out of a suitcase, it's nice to actually cook my own food as well. So I don't know something within the health and wellness or cooking some that type of world maybe. You can cook for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay, I'm gonna pick and choose. You have to come skiing with me now. Huh? You have to come up to go skiing with me now. I haven't been up to the mountain in a long time. No? The first time like I went years? was with, uh, yeah, I'm just going to say years. That's <laughs> you don't safe, even know? That's a safe one. Like, I, it's like the best part of me and the worst part of me is I'm so intrigued. Even yeah. like stuff like, I'm really genuinely intrigued by other people's passions and specializations. Mm-hmm. And earlier on, I would take that as, oh, I'm intrigued by it. I should do it. Yeah, you, like, wanted to try everything. Yeah, which kind of created a sort of, like, manicness in me because then I felt like I was never, like, you can't be content if you're always wanting to do someone else's thing. Yeah. So growing up has also helped. Yeah. Like, there's been a lot of grace in growing up and going, I can love and be proud of and, like, lift up other people in theirs. Yeah. And not necessarily have to go into it. Try to do it and be the best at it. Yes. Yeah. And, like, trying new things with that was really tough if I didn't feel like I'd be good at it. Yeah. And I'm so glad that those things are shaking off now. Yeah, that's there's a good. lot of things that I yeah. want to try that I know it's not too late to try. It might be too late realistically to do, to be like the greatest. Yeah. But not too late to like that's, delve into it. That's well, well put because one of my teammates is a, she's a singer and plays guitar and, and I love listening to her. I'm like, oh, I, like, I want to do that too. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, you have to get past that. I'm not going to be like great at it or better than her at it and that's okay but mm-hmm. like we will just strum along a little bit yeah that's great though yeah. like like letting go of the fear of failure yeah so if like you think about like you always have fear in some way or another where like if you didn't if you let that fear like take control of you you'd never try anything new yeah and like without trying anything new you'd never grow yeah so how can you grow and get better as a human or anything without mm-hmm. you know having the bravery to get outside of your comfort zone and grow. And and I, what it, yeah, I learned that like early on. Cause and we it sounds like you yeah. had a, a core group of people too yeah. that made room for that risk, yeah. which is such a gift that you had people who kind of, maybe they said it Help develop. explicitly, but or they just made space for that to say, yeah, try, mm-hmm. try it, try, keep trying. Whereas I realize that that's yeah. a luxury because some people maybe have just felt completely yeah. demolished upon that, but it can still be restored yeah. where you can come back and be like, everything good that I've been able to like witness and taste has come from mm-hmm. that risk. Yeah. What What are the calculated risks of you as an alpine skier? Yeah, the number one risk for us is dying. Like it's a, one of the higher risk sports that you can do. Um, you know, there's been a lot of sad stories over the years of yeah you know things happen um and the biggest one in our sport also is knee injuries uh concussions are another one um so there's a lot of physical risks there's mental risks as well um yeah i think just there's always the fear before you go out of a start gate because you know it can go wrong so quickly um but what's cool is when you're younger you don't have that fear it's it's interesting as you get older how you develop more of that fear as you kind of grow as a human and are more aware of your surroundings and what's going on and um, so over the years I've really found a way to notice fear and be accepting of it and know that fear is there for a reason it's nothing it's survival to, yeah it's nothing to be scared of like it's it's a good thing to have um, and so I've noticed that yeah, before I go out of the start gate, I'm going to be fearful, but that's a good thing. I'm not living if I'm not scared and that, yeah, it's okay to have that. And, you know, it's, it's nothing to make you back down of because there's always going to be another race. Um, so the fear of failure is there, but knowing that I've 
always have another race that I can do better at the next time. And if I do fail, no one's going to care or remember that, really. You know, of course, I don't want to, like, trip out of the start gate and, like, land on my face. <laughs> but you know what? If so, then I'll probably make, like, some America's Funniest Home video. So there you <laughs> go. But, yeah, I think just knowing that it's it's okay to be scared. And yeah. there's something so freeing about being vulnerable and scared and then, like, taking that fear head on and conquering it. And then you get down and you're like, wow, I just conquered that fear. Mm-hmm. I can do anything. I can literally do anything I want because I know how to face fear in the eye and not be scared and conquer it. So it's been a really big learning lesson for me. So up until this point, what are you the most proud of? I think I'm most proud of the way I've learned to listen to myself and become the human that I am by, uh, you know, accepting criticism from others, but learning how to believe in myself and not care what others think. I think that's such a hard thing as humans to comprehend. And I don't know, just learning over the years that I'm gonna do what I wanna do. And, and, and I know that if I work really hard and I believe in myself and have that nitty gritty, just keep trying to get better every day at my craft, then I'll be able to be really successful in it. And there's gonna be hard days and there's always hard days still. Like there's days where you, I have a small patella tendon injury that I've been working through and that really gets me sometimes. Or you just have a bad day on the hill or something at home with your family life, there's something you're going through. There's always gonna be something, but I think having that, learning that, to have that resilience and that you know, just it's going to be okay and that you work through it and you'll come better out on the other side because of it. So I'm going to give you a little explanation of this. uh, It's kind of like the second to last bit. Okay. Uh, I was reading this book and in it, I mean, we talked about character. um, Mm -hmm. And in it, the author distinguishes between what he calls eulogy virtues and resume virtues. And both are important and necessary. It wasn't saying that yeah. Um, that one is like lesser than as much as often in our society the resume virtues are typically given a lot more attention mm-hmm. because they're just out there invisible like our achievements yeah. it's like the the just the visible like the stuff that you literally could put on a resume it's our awards yeah. it's our accomplishments accolades. whether they be yeah, our accolades yeah. and, and a lot of those are um, representative or indications of yeah. a lot of good character at work but they don't usually give credit to the character behind it and then yeah. eulogy virtues being like the character mm-hmm. the character traits what that makes you you that makes you you the things yeah. that you foster um like even when you Beliefs. mentioned like res- resilience yeah whereas that don't, you don't necessarily put that on a resume yeah if not, <laughs> i am resilient i am resilient if not for hire that, me <laughs> a lot of those accolades yeah can't really come through yeah. or like that strong like steadfast patience those kind of things that the older you get the more you realize oh man I really hope I have that or the people around me have that Mm -hmm. but we're not really there yet as a society where those are the things that we give the most yeah most credit credit so as of right now and you don't have to narrow it to one but I say one just in case people feel uncomfortable naming more but uh what resume virtue are you the most proud of which is kind of like the last question but so what accolade achievement accomplishment so far throughout your life road so far are you the most proud of and then what resume virtue do you feel like is at work like that is evident in you that if if you were to pass right now yeah that you feel assured like i would be remembered for this um i think i'm most proud of First off, just being an Olympian, um, just because it, I think it's it just shows that it's something that I've dedicated my whole life to and worked worked my whole life to get to this point. So I think just that is a testament to um, the other virtue of you know belief, self belief. Uh, I think our society, a lot of so many people don't believe in believe in themselves and are very self conscious about what other people think. Um, and I think it's a hard thing to develop. So I, I think 
um, you know, just just have I've been brought up in an amazing household where my parents instilled that in me and um, have kind of helped nurture the side of you can do whatever you want. Um, so I guess that my the virtue is just having that belief and um, learning how to. I've learned how to genuinely like love my family and that sounds really cheesy because we're like oh, everyone always says yeah I like oh I love my parents but like I have as I've gotten older such a genuine love for my family and what it means to me and that support system um so yeah I don't know if that answers it yeah. completely but um those are kind of two different bridges but yeah pretty they go together I guess how would you say this is kind of a playoff of that yeah uh, how do you think your parents were able to strike a balance if there is any between speaking that into you about like if you want to do this you can do this like whatever it is yeah like how they show it how do they like communicate yeah like dream big and then also create the environment an environment that that could happen because it's to thrive like some might feel like yeah my parents always told me like anything but there wasn't maybe any sort of structure or system to realistically get you there yeah so then it just feels like big dreams with yeah a lot of smoke and you're like it's easy to say things yeah I think my parents led by example um you know they're both successful in what they've done throughout their lives and uh, just by I think taking me to the mountain every weekend was huge showing me how much they cared and that they clearly believed in me enough as I got older to let me keep pursuing it um you know we went to the 2002 Olympics as well so I they kind of instilled that that passion and um, the love of the 10 years old when I went and I watched Julia Mancuso compete in the Olympics and then um, in 2014 I for my first Olympics I went and competed alongside as her teammate um, so I think it's it's cool that you have these you know people to look up to and that instilled that that passion when I was younger and I think my parents saw that and helped nurture that I don't usually end like this but uh okay. so your follow through the grit to commit to what you did commit to and the clarity that led you to miss out on a ton of other things so that you could be present for other things i commend you that is a crazy amount of long-term uh passion because it's really easy to have like spurts of passion where people are like i'm kind of interested in this now everyone seems pretty hyped on it i'm gonna be hyped on it and then when people disappear and the excitement's gone their interest in it disappears yeah but yours persisted and that's always like stuck with me like even though we haven't been like in a relationship I'm like she did it <laughs> and even if it wasn't the olympics which that's obviously very something very big to be proud of whatever you would have said if you had stuck with it the way you have through thick and thin i would have been like equally like whoa yeah she said it and she meant it and she's doing it yeah she stuck to her word so i commend you we're obviously really proud of you you. but you hopefully you know that (laughs) and the world is telling you that now good thing i really followed through man i know because if not you'd be a complete (laughs) loser yeah really what would i be doing then (laughs) no it's great (laughs) thank you i appreciate it that means a lot thank you hopefully it can help inspire other young children when they're that age that i was set their minds and believe and do whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Now, now you can dance. Now music, right? Now dance, dance, dance. It's like weird about music, though. I'll add music in. So keep doing your thing. Are you serious? Wait, I think I saw. I think I saw uh, a picture of that. Our press officer and I, we both. I don't know why, but we like doing it. So we like bonded over that. Over twerking. Yeah. We're like, oh, you twerked.